React hooks are dead, and here's what's replacing them in 2025. This is an interesting one. I use React hooks a lot in my Next.js applications, and I guess they're not too bad. It's just sometimes my application ends up filled up with them. So I'm curious to find out why they are bad and also if I could be using something better that I'm not using right now. Let's get into it. React hooks were revolutionary in 2019, but they are becoming the jQuery of 2025. I would say that's a bit of a stretch, but let's see. I know, I know. Before you close this tab and write an angry comment, hear me out. <laughs> okay. I've been building React apps since 2016, survived the class component era, celebrated when hooks arrived, and now I'm watching the ecosystem shift again. After building 50 plus production apps and mentoring hundreds of developers, I've noticed something troubling. Hooks are creating more problems than they solve. Okay. Code, yes. The hook trap. That's killing developer productivity. Let's be honest about what hooks really gave us. The simple counter um, example everyone loves. Okay, yes, we have a use state. Um, I guess use state hook to store the state. We have use effect right here that's going to update the state. What, wait, what is this doing? Document.title. No one ever does this though. Count, wait, who does this? Why do you need to do document.title if the count is already in there? Oh, sorry, the, the title of the page. No one really does that, but okay, whatever. Um, yeah, so when it's clicked, it increases the state by one and that updates here. Cool, simple. Looks clean, right? Now here's the same component after six months in production. <laughs> yeah, this is annoying, I guess. This doesn't actually happen in my application and I'll show you guys why, but I can see what he's basically... Um, saying here let me just make sure it's a he submit okay um yeah so this page ends up fit, uh, getting filled with other states um you have use effect and then you're doing stuff here if the count is greater than 10 then um, make an api call to the milestones endpoint yeah i guess i see the point you end up with a component that's filled with hooks this is the hook reality what started as a simple state management became becomes a maze of dependencies, effects, refs that nobody can debug. <laughs> the three fundamental problems hooks can't solve, the dependency hell. Every intermediate React developer has been burned by this. So in this example, you have use effect. And I guess it's basically saying if one of these dependencies are missing, then this API call is going to be still. So essentially, you need to make sure that this use effect runs every single time one of these changes. Again, I don't really have this problem in my code. Um, and I'll show that in a bit, but I'm curious to see what um, solutions he has. ESLint yells at you, you add the dependency component, re-renders infinitely, you add use callback. Now you need use memo. Yeah, I really hate these two. I feel like every time I have to write code that has use callback or use memo, I feel like I'm doing something wrong or very hacky. Suddenly you are managing more optimizations than business logic. Okay, so that's the first problem. You need to remember to add the um, states to the use effect. Next, hooks force you to think in effects and renders instead of events and state changes. This is backwards. What you want to express when user clicks save, validate, and submit form. Okay, and what you end up doing? Oh, yeah, if should submit. Yeah, yeah. This is annoying. This actually pisses me off. I'm not gonna lie. So what happens? You basically need multiple states, and essentially, if a user submits, then you basically set should submit to true, and then you validate and submit, and then you set should submit to false, and then you're basically calling another variable, uh, sorry, call another function, which might also have a state that is like validated. But again, this doesn't usually happen to me because with this, I would just have a function that the button calls right away and it's on click. And then in there, I'll probably just call another function that checks if the form is valid or not um, and then submit. But yeah, maybe I'm doing something wrong. You guys let me know. Number three, the testing nightmare. Mock use effect, mock use state. I never really write front end um, tests, so I can't confirm or deny if this problem is real, but let's read on. Test custom hooks in isolation. The testing story for hooks is still a mess in 2025. Meanwhile, class components had clear life cycle methods you could spy on and test predictably. I can see why that would be annoying, but again, I don't write any front end tests, so I don't really know about this problem. What's actually replacing hooks? The React team isn't sitting idle. Here's what's already landed in production apps. 
React server com components. Server components limits 80% of hook usage by moving states to the server where it belongs. I'm still yet to use React server components. I'm one of those people that I was using Next.js pages since I started coding React applications. And I've just gotten so used to it that I can't, I can't be bothered to try something else. But I really do need to jump into um, app routers because in um, React page, uh, with Next.js pages, you can't actually use server components. But essentially, the idea behind server components is that, let's say this was a um, server component, this user profile. None of this is actually run on the front end. It's actually run on the back end. So you don't need loading states. You don't need to, I guess, have use effects to... Um, to basically like um, fetch the user data or fetch the user post. So you end up with cleaner, um, cleaner functions or yeah, function components. This is true. I think you don't necessarily need server components to do this though, because for example, if I show you the application I'm working on right now, I'm not using server components because again, this is Next.js. If you see, for example, this is the manage labels dialogue. In here, I'm using TRPC tan stack. And what that means is that from here, I can actually call my backend code directly. Um, so this is like update tag. This is my backend route for updating the tag. And in the front end, I'm essentially just calling that. What this happens, like what this gets converted to is a HTTP call um, to, um, behind the scene. So on the front end, if you like tap on the dialog, you see it actually makes a HTTP call to my um, endpoint right here. But on the front end, it allows me to write a lot cleaner code. Because for example, look, I don't need a use effect for is loading or for the data because everything is stored right here. You have the loading for when this is actually loading. You have the data. You have a function here that you can call to refetch it. So this is a lot. This is very clean to me. And I guess it's one of the reasons I haven't needed to switch to um, server components. But yeah, I can see how this gets rid of a bunch of use states and use effects. Cool. But the thing is, even if I basically do something similar to this, I still need user effect and use state, especially when the um, the user can do something on the front end um, and you don't, yeah, it's not it's not something that has to be initialized on the back end. You still need use state to store all that and use effect to react to that happening. But let's see if there's any other examples. Borrowed from SolidJS and adopted by frameworks like Quick, signals provide fine grain reactivity. This is interesting. I've never seen this before. Okay, so you import signal and you create, a, I guess, a state variable with this. I don't know what they call it, a signal state. And then very similarly, when it's clicked, you can increase the value of the state um, and then you can show the value right here. How is this different from use states though? The magic, only the specific dumb node that uses count the value re-renders. Oh, okay. So you don't need to use memo or use callback. That makes sense. Essentially, what this is basically saying is if this was a use state and there was other components in here, as soon as the use state, uh, the state changes, everything in that component has to change. Whereas with signals, only the, um, I guess the dumb nodes are using that state directly are changed so you don't need anything to like um, stop expensive re-renders like use callback or use memo this is pretty cool i've never seen this before um yeah that's cool i might actually be using that in my application concurrent features plus suspense react 18's concurrent features make data fetching de declarative again so what is this you have the user profile suspense fallback to the profile skeleton if this doesn't load user data user id I don't really okay yeah you're passing the user id in there suspense fallback what is the suspense no use effect to trigger loading states no use state to track loading oh i guess suspense somehow behind the scene is loading this what is wait let me see suspense react never seen this before lets you display a fallback until its children have finished loading but how does it know when the children are done loading how does it know? So you have the fallback here, albums, and then in albums, how does it know? Oh, is it because of this? Use. Oh, right. Because if you wrap, I think it's probably something to do with the use. Oh, yeah, there we go. If you use, read in the value of a cash promise with use. Okay, got it, got it. So as long as the use is loading, then it basically shows that. That's cool. But isn't use a... Uh, um, a React hook. So I guess this isn't really getting rid of hooks because you're still going to have to use the 
use hook in each of these um <laughs> in each of these components. So yeah, not sure. Maybe you end up using less hooks at the end, but I feel like you still end up using hooks. So not really sure about that. Next one, state machines. X state and similar libraries are gaining traction because they model state changes correctly. So this is a state machine. And this is ed, um, the editing state. You get there when you like submit an event called submit. Um, for the submitting state, you get there either submit an event called success or error. And the success state is the like final one. I, I personally don't love using these state machines. Maybe it's because I'm usually working on smaller applications. So this just seems a bit too complex for me. Um, but I can see why it's really good because you essentially really controlling how your states are transitioned between, meaning that it's harder for you to write boggy code. But I also think it makes it so for you to develop applications. So yeah, I guess you guys can argue in the comment section <laughs> and let me know if you like um, these state machines or not. Migration strategy, Spark teams are using. So how do you actually migrate from using a bunch of hooks to not using any hooks? Um, I guess, yeah, number one is just stop writing new hooks, use server components, uh, for new ones, signals for client states. Yeah, basically just like change right now. I, I guess that's not bad. I do believe in the world where if you want to start doing something, the easiest way is actually to, instead of going back to your application and trying to refactor everything, I think just try it for a few components and then just see how you find it. And then either you slowly change the rest of your components to using that new method or you basically revert back to whatever you are doing. So yeah, this is not bad. Extract a business logic, move complex state management out of components, um, use like a clean service instead, something like this. Yeah, or I would say use TRPC Tanstack. I think this that would have been a really good addition to this because it does a lot of that behind the scenes, so you end up not using that much states. Um, gradual replacement, convert hook heavy components one by one. I guess that's very similar to the first um, example. And I guess let's just end with this, why this matters for your career. The job market has already shifted in my recent interviews with 20 plus senior React developers. The ones getting hired are talking about server component architecture. They're probably talking about AI too. <laughs> State machine patterns, concurrent rendering strategies, performance without hooks. Meanwhile, developers still focus on advanced hook patterns have been seen as behind the curve. So that, yeah, I think this is actually a pretty good article. I think for myself, what I'm going to be trying is this signal stuff. It seems pretty useful and it might actually like help some of my components render faster. I hope you got something out of this too.